My name is Tom DeVlas. I'm a Ricardo Almeida black belt. I've been training for 15 years now. 14 or 15 years, been a black belt for eight, nine years. Uh, I was always a very competitive kid. Like I grew up doing all kinds of sports and in, in high school I did track and field. I was much smaller and uh, I was a really good long jumper. I went to college for it, but I tore all the ligaments in my ankle. And I needed to compete in something. I could never just sit around and, and, and watch things happen. I want to be in the mix. And I was always a, a, an aggressive kid but I never would fight for no reason. Like I would always need a reason to be aggressive. I was never a bully. I always stuck up for people. Listen, I'm not perfect. I was never perfect, but I was never a bully. I figured what better thing to do than jujitsu and, and mixed martial arts, right? You have an outlet and you have something that you could do aggressively in a positive way. And uh, I found jujitsu and I've just been addicted ever since. I wanted to be a part of that like culture. It's funny because looking at that now, I don't want to really be a part of the mixed martial arts culture. I like jujitsu much better. But at that time, I wanted to be. I was young, hungry to compete. I just wanted to learn. What I love about jujitsu now is different than what I loved about when I first started. So when I first started, I, I loved the competitive aspect of jujitsu. The fact that you could always become better. There's always going to be somebody tapping you. There's always going to be somebody pushing you and coming back for more, coming back for more. Now what I love about jiu-jitsu so much is the fact that it could really be for everybody. You know, and some people still say, oh, jiu-jitsu is not for everybody. Well, if you say jiu-jitsu is not for everybody, you're teaching jiu-jitsu the wrong way. You know, you come into our competitive room and it doesn't get much tougher than that. But at the same time, if you come into our everyday class, it's we really have people from all walks of life. So the fact that I could touch people's lives through jiu-jitsu is what brings me back. The fact that I could touch people's lives through something that I love is what makes me love it. I'm just not about arm bars and chokes, you know, there's a lot more to me than that. I don't walk around to smile every day. I'm not the happiest guy in the world every day, but even on my bad days, I'm trying to inspire other people. And I want to share all of who I am, you know, and, and much of who I am is trying to motivate and trying to help and trying to inspire. That being said, the fact that I inspire people inspires me. So it's like a domino effect, like I inspire them, they inspire me, I inspire them, they inspire me. And the fact that I can do that through jiu-jitsu, something I love in a gi, wrestling around, teaching martial arts, teaching chokes and self-defense and still help people and still make people better, better individuals. To me, there's nothing better to be a part of. Like it's the most, it's the absolute most complete thing that you can be a part of, I feel. I am not a perfect guy. I've made many mistakes in my life, but I've helped a lot of people. And that's something I pride myself on, you know, being available to people as much as I possibly can sharing my story with people as much as I possibly can, helping people understand that life always gets better. No matter how bad it is, it always gets better. And you would stand those times on the mats, those tough training sessions, like there's nothing worse than being physically exhausted, being mounted by another human being who is not exhausted. Once you realize it's not always that bad, it's really not that big of a deal, it's, the rounds are gonna end. And if it doesn't end, so what, you get tapped, you live to fight another day. Once you learn to deal with these problems on the mats, I feel every other problem in life becomes that much easier. And I've dealt with some really, really big problems in life. So I'm not speaking from someone's perspective that's never suffered before. Like I've suffered a lot. And um, definitely Jiu Jitsu has helped my mindset to be able to live a happy life. And that's essentially everything that we're looking for in life, right? Is happiness. Success is happiness. What is success if we're not happy, right? So Jiu Jitsu helps me to become happy. I think to say Jiu Jitsu changed my life is an understatement. We need to reword that to Jiu Jitsu is my life. Jiu Jitsu didn't change my life. Jiu Jitsu is who I am. It's my existence. I, th I think I'm most proud of now is just having a really strong impact on the Jiu Jitsu world. And it makes me happy the fact that people equate my name to something positive. Sure, not everyone's going to love me and that's fine, right? But I truly do have good intentions and I truly do want to help as many people as possible. So the fact that my impact is so strong on the Jiu Jitsu world, something I love so much and I have such a big influence in the jiu-jitsu community, in the world as a whole, to me that's my greatest achievement. And I believe this is just the beginning. I believe it's really going to keep spreading and I, and, and I believe I'm going to touch more than just the jiu-jitsu world. Fame is not something I look for, but I believe fame is a consequence of doing the right things. Fame is a consequence of living the right way and, and helping as many people as you possibly can. You know, like I shared a video the other day in my last fight where I knocked a guy out and then I helped him out. Man, I got like 250,000 views. Truly after I knocked him out, like in the ring, like, I was just not happy, man. You know, I just felt bad for him. I, I, I felt like, I, I don't know, it was, it was a hard feeling to explain because my hard work paid off, but at the same time, I, it was hard to celebrate when I know that his whole world just came crashing down at that moment. That his wife and his daughter had to see him get hurt. I mean, listen, you, you gotta do what you gotta do, it's MMA. And it just wasn't for me anymore.
the beginning it was, towards the end it wasn't. So it wasn't like something negative that 250,000 people saw. 250,000 people saw something positive, something compassionate in this world that's so crazy today that could possibly, you know, make people happy and make people feel good about themselves. And to me, that's, that's success right there. That's what I live for. Now I'm doing so many seminars and, and I'm, uh, I'm, tra I, I'm literally, you know, I, I travel around the United States and, and sometimes, you know, the world. And uh, it's always very, very important to me and, and, and it's such a good feeling that my, I always know my kids are, you know, with a loving mother and my wife takes such good care of them. Uh, but I am traveling to teach the seminars and, and, and stuff like that. And, you know, it's no easy job. You know, my kids, my two kids are crazy. Uh, Isabel's going to be six in February. Thomas is going to be two in January. And they're very, very active, uh, extremely active. Like, there is zero downtime. There is never downtime in, uh, in my household with my kids. So... You know, like October alone, I'm away uh, three weekends. I'm giving seminars. I gave a seminar in Detroit. I'm giving a seminar in Pittsburgh, and then I'll be in Maryland. And uh, you know, I don't have to worry about my kids because I know, you know, that uh, Delilah takes such good care of them. So for me, that's just uh, it was always very important to me. Uh, you know, when when I got married to, to marry someone who was a, a would be a wonderful mother. You know, and I've. Uh, Definitely found that in her, and uh, I'm thankful for that for sure. Life for me growing up was uh, interesting. Very loving family. My my father, I love him very dearly. I was an alcoholic and, and drug addict, so I, I was exposed to a lot, you know. But we always stayed tight, and it helped me to understand that he, he was never a bad person. He just had an addiction and a disease, and it helped me to be very compassionate. You know, I was an only child, and growing up around that and seeing that, it, it just made me. I think appreciate certain aspects of life a, a little more, you know. Uh, every good time that we had, I, I would definitely hold on to and, and really appreciate. I don't want to say life was ever easy, you know, but like it could always been much worse and like my parents made sure I had the best of everything. I have a great support system in my parents and, and, and it's such an irony because my father was a drug addict and alcoholic so when he wasn't drinking, he was like the most supportive guy ever. You know, and then when he was drinking, of course, things were different within the household. But it helped me to mature at a young age, you know, and, and, and it helped me to uh, to become me. Like, I don't regret anything because it, it made me so much stronger, I feel. I don't have any anger towards him whatsoever. I'm actually thankful that it was him because if it wasn't him, it could have been me. I have an addictive personality as well, and I turned to jujitsu. The first time I actually started drinking, like socially, just like I have a, have a drink, it was like a few years ago. So I went through all the high school, all the college, most of my adult life with never touching alcohol. I hated it, I despised it. It was a reason for any kind of pain that I had. I was always afraid of who I would become if I was drunk, right? Because I saw how my dad could be. And I believed that I could have been worse than my dad. You know, I don't fear any man. You know, I don't fear any circumstance. The only thing I fear now is something, God forbid, happening to my, uh, to my kids. Other than that, there's not a thing I fear in the world. So I'm afraid if I were to be drunk, that I would maybe act on some of the things that uh, I may want to do sometimes, you know. Everybody says, oh, I'm not scared of this, I'm not scared of that. I'm really not scared, man. You know, I'm not afraid of death. So I always avoided alcohol at all costs. I hated it because I associated alcohol with, you know, in a negative light to where it's not necessarily the case, right? People have great times drinking socially and, you know, it could be something positive. It's just not something that I thought was positive. Now, of course, I'm looking at it a little differently. I'm 34 years old, I'm more mature, and I see things a little bit more clear now. With that, our family stay together. My parents are still married. We do family stuff. My dad is like, he's been sober now for I think two and a half years, and uh, he's like the greatest grandfather that my uh, my my children could have. You know, so I'm so proud of him in that aspect that he could you know live for that right now because. Perhaps sometimes that he and I miss together, he could get back to his own grandkids. Like every family, you know, we, we, we had our problems, but I, I believe we're closer than most families because we've overcome so much together as a team. A simple quote that I love the most that I always turn to is just trust in God. I think it speaks volumes. No matter how tough life gets, put your trust in Him and uh, everything works out. Most people say, ah, oh, you know, Maybe you shouldn't have been exposed to the things you were exposed to, but you know what? I think I did okay for myself, and I wouldn't want it any other way.